Emirates, the largest customer for the 777X, has recently unveiled some giant problems surrounding this aircraft and their ambitious plans for it. How serious are these huge problems, and what are they? How Boeing solve it? Let's dive into today's episode. Emirates Chairman Tim Clark predicts that the Boeing 777X will not enter commercial service before 2026, further extending the delay of the wide-body aircraft that is set to become a mainstay in the Dubai Airlines' future long-haul fleet. This aircraft will play a pivotal role in Emirates' wide-body fleet. In a long time, 777 and A380 have been two mainstays of Emirates, but the prolonged delays of the 777X combined with Airbus halting production of the A380 have presented significant challenges. As a result, Emirates has had to refurbish many of its existing aircraft to extend their service life. Additionally, Emirates is one of the largest customers of the American aircraft manufacturer, with around 153 Boeing 777 aircraft, including variants like the 200LR, 300, and 300ER. Emirates is known for operating the largest fleet of Boeing 777 in the world. In an interview on the sidelines of the Farnborough International Air Show in the UK on Monday, Tim Clark stated that Boeing will face stricter management oversight for their new wide-body aircraft, ensuring that standards are precisely met. This means the control over the new aircraft will be tighter. The 777X is the largest twin-engine aircraft in the industry, with a capacity of around 400 seats. However, its entry into service has been delayed by five years due to numerous issues, including problems with the GE-9X engines and certification issues with the Federal Aviation Administration and other regulatory agencies. Boeing began certification test flights for the 777-9 this month in coordination with U.S. aviation regulators. The FAA approved the start of certification flights, with the first flight taking place on July 12th from Payne Field in Seattle. Due to delivery delays, Emirates had to redesign the cabin because the original design had become outdated, increasing costs. Additionally, with over 200 777X on order, the CEO of Emirates expressed dissatisfaction at the prospect of the airline's orders being pushed back in favor of those placed by other airlines afterward. Emirates and Qatar will eventually need to replace their A380, making the 777X a logical choice for them. The real question is, when will it enter service? Will there be further delays after so many setbacks? No one can answer that question yet. If you've watched this far, thank you. The 777X is truly a good aircraft with a potential future. We'll turn to the next part to see what Boeing has to solve. However, your support helps this video reach more aviation enthusiasts. So if you can please like, share the video, and subscribe if you're new here. Instead of developing an entirely new aircraft to replace its iconic 747, Boeing chose to build upon the 777 series, which remains the best-selling wide-body aircraft of all time with over 2,000 orders. The 777X was first announced in 2013, and flight tests with the FAA commenced earlier this month to secure official certification for commercial service. Over the years, Airbus has successfully introduced the A350 into service, which is the closest direct competitor in the long-haul segment. However, as demand rises and supply chain shortages persist, both manufacturers are compelled to innovate to stay competitive as airlines seek to renew their fleets. It seems that Emirates hopes Boeing can resolve these issues sooner than anyone else. Regarding this issue, the CEO believes that Boeing must address the following urgent matters. First, aircraft certification must be quickly obtained and brought into commercial service. Second, increase the production rate from three to five aircraft per month to meet the backlog of over 400 aircraft. Without speeding up production, processing the existing orders will take many years. This new aircraft, first announced in 2013, began flight tests with the FAA earlier this month to obtain official certification for commercial service. It is the largest commercial aircraft still in production, featuring wings that are extended by 22 feet, increasing the surface area to improve aircraft performance by 5% compared to rival aircraft and slightly more than today's 777. Moreover, its wings can fold, making it a distinctive and easily recognizable aircraft. The 777X has three variants, similar to the Dreamliner. The largest version, the Dash 9, has 35 more seats than the 300ER version with a similar range. Additionally, there is the Dash 8 variant and the smaller 777F freighter version, which has a range that is 1,500 nautical miles greater. Another performance improvement comes from the newly designed engine. 
The 777X will use General Electric's GE9X engines, which are the largest and most powerful commercial jet engines ever built, with a record thrust of 134,300 pounds. These engines also offer approximately 5% better fuel efficiency compared to competitors, with fewer fan blades and lower noise emissions. Additionally, the new engine technology results in lower nitrogen oxide emissions and less noise, both in the cabin for passengers and at the airport. Modification to the aircraft's fuselage also offer opportunities to enhance the passenger experience, notably by improving connectivity to the outside world. The windows have been significantly enlarged compared to the current 777 and are 30% larger than those on the competing A350. The overall architecture is designed to provide more space for passengers' luggage, and several technologies from the 787 have been incorporated into the new model, including an advanced filtration system and a cabin altitude reduced to 6,000 feet during stable cruising. Its competitor is the A350. However, as demand rises and supply chain shortages persist, both manufacturers are forced to innovate to remain competitive while airlines seek to renew their fleets. As of now, Boeing's new flagship aircraft has received a total of 481 orders. At the Dubai Air Show on November 20th, 23, Emirates placed an additional order for 55 Boeing 777-9 and 35 777-8, bringing the airline's total order for the 777X to 205. On the first day of the Farnborough Air Show, Boeing secured several aircraft sales contracts at the year's largest aviation event led by a deal with Korean Airlines. With the addition of Boeing-9 and 787-10, Korean Air plans to have a total of 203 new generation aircraft in its fleet by 2034, including 33 A350, 50 A321neo, and 20 Boeing 787-9. On Monday, the U.S. aircraft manufacturer had a total of 78 aircraft orders, including 56 firm orders and 22 options, with customers such as Japan Airlines, Luxembourg's Luxair, and Florida-based cargo carrier National Airlines. Additionally, Qatar Airways, which currently has orders for over 70 of these aircraft, is expected to receive its first aircraft in the first quarter of 2026, according to CEO Badr Almir in a private interview at the show on Monday. European competitor Airbus has signed a contract with a customer for 20 wide-body A330 aircraft. This is a great aircraft, and it's easy to see that other airlines will line up to place orders for it. There will be a long wait for these planes to be delivered in the future. It's a true replacement for the 747. While it may not carry as many passengers as the A380, it offers more capacity than anything Airbus has, and unlike the A380, it won't require specialized facilities. The operational cost savings will be undeniable for long-haul operators serving high-demand routes, assuming, of course, that Boeing can deliver. Looking at the facts, this is the only aircraft poised to inherit the legacy of both the 747 and the A380. Beside that good news about 777X, on July 23rd, Boeing announced that they had resumed deliveries of the 737 MAX, its best-selling aircraft, to China after a prolonged delay due to legal issues. Earlier in May, Reuters reported that Boeing's deliveries to China had been delayed because China was conducting a routine evaluation of the batteries related to the cockpit voice recorder, CVR for short. The resumption of deliveries is a boost for the American aircraft manufacturer, which has been grappling with a quality and safety crisis. Deliveries of new Boeing aircraft to China had been halted since 2019 following two serious crashes involving the MAX 8, and amid rising tensions over issues ranging from technology to national security between Washington and Beijing. Boeing stated that on July 9th it delivered two 777 to Air China. China suspended most of its Boeing aircraft orders in 2019 after the 737 MAX was grounded worldwide. Deliveries of wide-body aircraft resumed in December, and narrow-body MAX jets in January. As of the end of 2023, Boeing reported holding approximately 147 37 MAX 8 in inventory, including 85 aircraft for Chinese customers. Boeing had delivered 22 aircraft to China from the beginning of 2024 through April 30th. Why do you think Emirates has given the 777X a special place in their fleet? What does the future hold for this aircraft? 
Share your thoughts in the comments below. In the high stakes world of aviation, where every moment counts and credibility is everything, even the smallest misstep can unleash significant repercussions. Emirates is a major airline with the means to solve any problem easily, but the delays and delays in the delivery of the 777X have also caused them must show their attitude. So how has Emirates responded to the delay of the aircraft that was once considered a future change maker? What have they done to solve Boeing's series of problems that affect them? And can Boeing remove the problem, or is it just putting lipstick on a pig? Amid Boeing's ongoing delays in delivering the 777X, Sir Tim Clark expressed the airline's growing disappointment, even irritation, and emphasized the need for a serious conversation with Boeing about these delays, the solutions, and a final delivery timeline. The missed delivery dates have had significant impacts on airlines like Emirates, which rely on receiving their aircraft on schedule. Clark also highlighted that the timelines Boeing has provided are meaningless and merely serve to appease customers. Boeing has consistently missed every projected delivery date they've announced, yet they need to establish a public schedule. Furthermore, this has made future planning extremely challenging. Therefore, this airline has encountered considerable challenges in this matter and has openly expressed its frustration. That frustration likely played a key role in securing more favorable terms following an additional order for the 777X at the Dubai Air Show 2023. Of course, Boeing had to make concessions to appease Emirates, one of the world's largest airlines and a major customer of several large aircraft models. The 777X is currently the largest aircraft in production and the airline, as a leading airline from the UAE, is a crucial customer for it. Although the terms of the contract were never disclosed, it's clear that Emirates' dissatisfaction contributed to the final outcome. This highlights their tough negotiation stance. They may not dislike the aircraft itself, but their frustration is undeniable. We can understand their reasoning, though at times it's worth considering whether the level of response is justified, especially given the prolonged uncertainty they faced. Ultimately, it's the uncertainty that's most aggravating. Currently, they do not expect to receive the aircraft until 2026, and with the additional time needed for crew training and operational integration, it may not be fully in service until 2027. However, given Boeing's ongoing delays and CEO Tim Clark's candid remarks, it's evident that Emirates has little confidence in the 2026 timeline unless they actually have the aircraft in hand. For an airline like Emirates, which operates a dense flight schedule and relies on fleet stability, these delays create operational challenges and disrupt long-term development plans. Boeing's inability to deliver on time has left this operator facing a shortage of new aircraft intensifying the airline's dissatisfaction. So how did Emirates solve this delay? Thank you for sticking with us until this part of the episode. The 777X truly is an aircraft that garners a lot of attention, and the issues surrounding it are always taken care of. Your support helps our video reach others who are interested in the world of aviation, so please like, share the video, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Thank you so much. Emirates is a smart airline, so they are always ready to deal with problems. The airline has always maintained the strategy of operating a young fleet, but due to the consequence of Boeing's delays, the airline has changed the nature of its strategy by retaining and upgrading older 777 and even its iconic A380, most of which are aging. The airline has stated that it will continue to operate the A380 at least until 2040 as a response to the delays in new aircraft deliveries. This is a necessary step to ensure that their operational capacity remains intact without compromising the customer experience. With Emirates planning to keep the A380 in service until 2040, do you think this iconic aircraft still has the appeal it once did, or is it time for newer models to take center stage? Leave your thoughts below. Furthermore, they assure that extending the life of its older aircraft will not negatively impact service quality. The airline is pushing the upgrade of its existing fleet to meet high standards, allowing it to maintain its position as a leader in the Middle East and globally. For Emirates, the Middle East is not just its hometown, but also a battleground against fierce global competitors like Qatar Airways and Etihad, both of which pride themselves on delivering exceptional passenger experiences. Therefore, this airline recognizes the need to continuously strive to preserve its market share and uphold its reputation for having the best cabin products in the region. Boeing's delays in delivering new aircraft have significantly impacted Emirates, one of the world's leading airlines. 
First and foremost, the shortage of new aircraft, particularly the 777X that the operator has ordered, has forced the airline to confront a capacity crisis. Not receiving aircraft on time has affected their ability to expand operations and reduce capacity for current flights, resulting in lost revenue opportunities. Additionally, to cope with this situation, they have had to continue operating and upgrading older aircraft, such as the 777 and A380. The cost of an upgrade program is up to $3 billion. This not only incurs high maintenance costs, but can also negatively impact fuel efficiency. Amidst fierce competition with rivals like Qatar Airways and Etihad, Emirates must exert extra effort to maintain its competitive edge and market share in the region. Moreover, as mentioned, the uncertainty surrounding delivery timelines from Boeing complicates this operator's strategic and financial planning. This uncertainty can influence future investment decisions, making the airline more cautious when considering expansion or shifts in its development direction. All these factors illustrate that Boeing's delays are not just affecting current operations, but could also have long-lasting effects on Emirates' position within the aviation industry. Furthermore, the constant delays and postponements of the aircraft have led interested parties to question whether the airline will cancel the 777X order and replace it with the A350-1000. What do you think about the idea of replacing 777X with the A350-1000? Leave your thoughts below. Whether Emirates considers ordering the A350-1000 and canceling its 777X order from Boeing depends on several important factors. First and foremost, the ongoing delays in the delivery of the 777X could compel them to reassess its options. If Boeing continues to fail to meet promised delivery timelines, this operator may lose confidence in Boeing's capabilities, prompting them to consider a shift to the A350-1000. This aircraft not only boasts impressive fuel efficiency, but also offers superior operational performance, aligning well with the airline's operational strategy. Moreover, Emirates' needs and fleet strategy will play a crucial role in this decision. The airline is committed to maintaining a modern and flexible fleet, and the A350-1000 might better meet these requirements than the 777X in certain scenarios. Additionally, fierce competition from rivals like Qatar Airways and Etihad Airlines drives Emirates to seek aircraft that can provide a competitive edge in terms of performance and costs. Finally, the relationship between Emirates and Boeing will be a determining factor. Should this airline choose to leverage Boeing's delays as a bargaining chip to renegotiate the terms of their contract or even request the cancellation of the 777X order, this could open the door for ordering the A350-1000. However, any such decision would require careful consideration, taking into account the specific circumstances and long-term benefits for the airline. All these factors illustrate that Emirates is in a position that could significantly impact its future ordering strategy, making it a pivotal moment in its approach to fleet management. However, to be a worthy replacement, it offers many more advantages. Indeed, the A350-1000 could become an attractive alternative to Boeing's 777X for several potential factors. First and foremost, the aircraft stands out with its superior fuel efficiency, thanks to its advanced design and modern technology. Fuel savings not only help reduce operating costs, but also play a significant role in the context of rising global fuel prices. This makes the A350-1000 a sensible choice for airlines looking to optimize costs and enhance profitability. Secondly, the operational range of the Airbus aircraft is impressive, allowing for long-haul flights without the need for refueling. This enables airlines to expand their network of destinations without facing limitations regarding range, while also enhancing competitiveness in the global aviation market. In addition to its performance, the A350-1000 boasts a modern and spacious cabin equipped with numerous amenities. Passengers enjoy a more comfortable space, along with advanced entertainment systems, which can significantly enhance the flying experience and attract more customers compared to the 777X. An improved cabin not only helps airlines elevate their service quality, but also increases customer retention. The lightweight structure of the A350-1000, made from composite materials, further enhances its performance by reducing the aircraft's weight, thus improving fuel efficiency. The use of modern materials also simplifies maintenance, minimizing both the time and costs associated with servicing. Because Emirates is a large airline with substantial funds to invest in mitigating the impacts of these delays, it's able to handle the situation effectively. 
But what if it were a smaller airline without the resources to make such investments? The consequences of these delays could be even more serious than we imagine. Share your thoughts below and let us know what you think. Do you feel confused when an aircraft contains many new breakthroughs in aerodynamics and engines, but it is not enthusiastically sought after by airlines? Well, the Boeing 777-8 is Boeing's newest wide-body aircraft and the world's largest twin-engine aircraft in production, but sales are pathetic. There was even consideration of whether the manufacturer should cancel the jet. So what's going on? Why doesn't anyone buy the Boeing 777-8? The Dash 8 is a part of the 777X family, which is the next development in the hugely successful Boeing 777 series. Though it has many new features, its new engines and wings are the most noticeable. It has the GE9X, the biggest and strongest turbofan in the planet. Additionally, its new composite wing is the largest that Boeing has ever designed. In fact, it requires folding wingtips in order to fit through most airport gates. There are two different flavors available for the 777X-8 and Dash 9. Basically, these two aircraft are almost identical. The difference is that the Dash 8 has a reduced fuselage of 70.86 meters, while the Dash 9 is 76.72 meters. The plane can accommodate 395 passengers in a two-class configuration. Boeing launched the Dash 8 to the market with the intention of making it ready to replace the older 777-300ER. The 300ER couldn't have been more successful as it became the second best-selling wide car of all time. That's why many eyes are waiting for Dash 8 to sell as well as its predecessor. It's safe to say that there is a market for a plane of this size to jump into, but reality shows that only 40 of them have been sold, accounting for only 10% of total 777X sales. So why is the 777-8 so difficult to sell? It can be said that one of the reasons that have a strong influence on the plane's poor performance comes from the time it was launched on the market. Judging based on the 300ER, the first of which were delivered in 2004, the average age of the global fleet is significantly younger, with the oldest members not nearly 20 years old. Furthermore, the fact that it still shows no signs of aging is proof that it is still doing very well in making money for the airline. That's right, it doesn't need to be replaced. 10 to 15 years is the right time when most airlines are ready to upgrade their fleets. As a consequence, this harmed 777X sales, but mainly on Dash 8, because Dash 9 has a higher capacity and it is more suitable to replace 747-400. In recent years, airlines such as British Airways, ANA, and Cathay Pacific have both removed the Queen of the Skies from their fleets, which is the opportunity for Dash 9 to appear. It should come as no surprise that it accounts for the majority of 777X sales. That's why Boeing will probably have to wait until the 300 ER ages and is no longer able to serve and that will be when the Dash 8 shows off its inherent capabilities. Customers will then come to Boeing with large orders. Is everything that simple? Sadly, the American manufacturer has another complex hurdle stemming from poor airframe optimization. Boeing is proud that the Dash 8 possesses new wings with a wingspan of up to 71.75 meters and is equipped with a powerful GE9X engine with a diameter of 134 inches. So the question is whether they need to be so big. Before any manufacturer begins to design a product, they have time to survey the market and absorb customer needs to be able to bring the best product. The aviation industry is no exception. In the case of the 777XC, Qatar and Emirates were the ones who influenced Boeing to significantly improve the size of the plane's wings. From the beginning, they ordered a total of nearly 200 777X units. And of course, for this reason, they have every right to ask the manufacturer to pay attention to their requirements. The two airlines are both based in the Persian Gulf where extremely hot summers combine with low humidity and thin air. All of these atmospheric conditions create drag that makes it harder for the plane to lift compared to other areas. And in the worst cases, this could actually lead to flights being grounded. However, their requests were invisible in general, making Boeing's production process a bit difficult. During early development, it was rumored that they pushed Boeing for a larger wing and more powerful engine than needed to generate more lift. But at the same time, it would make the plane much heavier and less efficient. Fortunately, Boeing was very hesitant to implement it. They tried not to increase the size of the wing too much. 
In the end, however, it seems like the 777X sacrificed some efficiency for performance, and Dash 8 is again at the heart of this trade-off. Despite having a smaller fuselage, the Dash 8 still had to use the same engines and wings as the Dash 9. Boeing did not optimize these parts so that they could be sized to fit the Dash 8. As a result, they were too large for their frame, causing the aircraft to become overweight. Analysts calculate that the Dash 8 will achieve a 13% less fuel burn advantage over the 300 ER session. There are also improvements, but the 737 MAX also achieves 14% savings compared to the 737 NG. And in fact, the two 737 versions share the same wingspan. In other words, that fuel savings is brought about by using a new engine, not by a new wing. It can be said that 13% does not make that much of a difference. Additionally, it has to compete with the Airbus A350-1000, a design that according to the manufacturer is completely clean synthetic. It is indeed difficult to compare because of course both Boeing and Airbus claim that their jets are superior. But one thing is that the A350-1000, much lighter, since the Dash 8's wings and engines are 300 ER heavier, it will be 30,000 pounds heavier than the A350. And with more weight, there's no reason it should need less fuel. However, that is not the end. There is a way to make the plane lighter while also serving their two potential airlines. Aluminum lithium, or ALI for short, is a brand new material that Boeing can utilize to construct the fuselage. The primary benefit of utilizing ALI is its approximate 10% lower weight in comparison to conventional aluminum. It also resists fatigue cracking better, which can help the aircraft last longer. Boeing might have saved tens of thousands of pounds by using this material, which would have improved the aircraft's efficiency and addressed the weight issue with the Dash 8 and Dash 9. But in the end, Boeing gave up on this possibility. They had finished creating the 787 Dreamliner using new materials at that point, and everyone is aware of the outcome. It has resulted in cost overruns totaling tens of billions of dollars and years of delays. Boeing was concerned that employing Al Ali, which they had never used previously, would lead the 777X down the same hazardous route. Above all, they worry that the cost of components and manufacturing will go up. Thus, they ultimately employed a standard aluminum fuselage. However, given that Al Ali is currently demonstrating itself to be a mature and trustworthy material, Boeing ought to have taken the chance. It has been effectively implemented on other commercial aircraft, most notably the A220, and is far less expensive to construct. It has actually demonstrated so much promise that it may be utilized as a material in aircraft in the future. Therefore, it appears that by passing on this chance, Boeing not only lost a great chance to solve the Dash 8 weight issue, but also a chance to lead the way in using this new material. Despite the 777-8 facing serious problems at present, it is still too early to completely write off the jets. Dash 8 has a very long flight range. It can fly nearly 8,800 nautical miles, the highest of any Boeing commercial aircraft. Even outperforms its predecessor by a considerable amount. Airlines like Singapore and Qantas have been introducing and sustaining ultra-long-haul routes like New York to Singapore and London to Perth bit by bit in recent years. And these routes are profitable by all accounts. Should the demand for these routes increase, the Dash 8 will be positioned to take a share of those markets. Additionally, the jet is proving to be an attractive cargo aircraft. Boeing has launched a cargo version of the Dash 8, and surprisingly, it has outsold the passenger variant. Compared to the old MD-111 and 747-200, it consumes much less fuel than those old planes. In addition, we can look forward to the 777-10 version because the 777X already has oversized features. This plane will be the largest twin jet ever built, and it will likely replace the 747-8 and a 380. In conclusion, there is no denying that the 777-8 has some problems, but at the same time it certainly has the latest and greatest technology that Boeing has to offer. It can be said that the manufacturer is quite unstable due to aircraft incidents along with significant investment in aircraft that are not selling well. The case of 787-10 is also proof.